I still see you guys here. A little side screen. Okay, cool. All right, so I'm going to try this. Uh, and then let me know in the class how you feel about this. It might get a little getting used to. But uh, all right, so it's 4. Uh, what time is it? But anyway, time to start, right? 412. Okay. All right, there we go. All right, so we're going to start section 2.3 now. All right, I'm new to this iPad thing, so bear with me. So, section 2.3. Calculating limits using the limit loss. How's that coming out? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Better than the whiteboard. Oh, you like it better than the whiteboard? Much more clear. Once you get farther yeah. away from your camera, it gets more like pixely. I don't know if that's just me, but yeah, same here. It looks pretty good, to be honest. Yeah, I was trying to in my morning class. Uh, I was covering the delta epsilon uh, as the first section with my Cal State Florida News is a different book, and I was that's like a tough section to explain. And uh, when I'm trying to uh, like, I have to point my finger. All right, here's where delta is. Here's where epsilon is, and I. Obviously, I can't point when I'm sharing the screen. I mean, there's a way you can do it with the cursor, but since it's my first day using it. Um, so I just said, you know what? I'm going to go through the whiteboard. So I was middle class. I said, all right, give me a two-minute break. Went back to the whiteboard. So I go, okay, well, this section, I can try to do it without uh, pointing to anything. All right. So uh, let's just go over some properties here. Uh, give me one second. Yeah, I'm looking at my... Yeah. Yeah. So... Some of the pro properties are pretty, pretty self-explanatory. So like, for example, limit as X approaches A of, that's supposed to be an A here, as X approaches A, of uh, a sum, like F of X plus G of X. That's equal to, is equal to limit as x approaches a of um, f of x plus limit as x approaches a of g of x. Okay, so basically limit of a sum is some of the limits. I'm trying to figure out where, how I can do a cursor in this. Well, that's uh, pointing. You know where the cursor would be? Like I can just point something? That hand, next to the hand. The hand itself. This hand? Yeah. Well, that just moves it. Maybe this one. No, the right of it, the right of the hand. That one. The pointer. Oh, perfect. Yeah, okay, good. Right here. Have you guys used this before? Yeah, you can also highlight with that with the with the one after the pencil. So highlight yeah. it or highlight over whatever you want. Oh yeah, but then if I want to erase the highlight, it erases everything, right? Oh no, oh, no, just the highlight. Yeah. Perfect. Okay, I'm learning. Well, again, uh, let's okay. So let's talk about the um, limit as x approaches a of f of x plus g of x equals. So limit of a sum is sum of the limits. So limit of a sum here is the sum of the limits. Now. The same is true if it was a subtraction sign. This just would be a subtraction sign. Same if it was a multiplication, this would be a multiplication. Same thing if this was division, this would be division. Uh, it's true for all four of them, except when it's division, just be careful, you, don't, you can't divide by zero. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Now, uh, let's, uh, for example, I mean, this is pretty basic, but let's say you got limit as X approaches to, I apologize if I'm going a little too slow, this, uh, this is a learning curve for me here. 
f of x equals five. And let's say you're given also limit as x approaches two of g of x equals six. And the question is, what's the limit as x approaches two of f of x plus g of x? Well, it's pretty much, I'm just reading the chat now. I think the tool on the right hand side is where the, oh, perfect, thank you. So, um, uh, so what you, what you wanna do here is, um, uh, so just, you know the property is a limit of a sum of some of the limits. So it's really, literally just five plus six, which is 11, and that's it. Hey, this uh, iPad that doesn't get scratched with the Apple Pencil, it's fine. It should be fine. That, also that back arrow on the top, um, left to the left, the T. It, Say that's again? Like un, that left arrow, the the U turn arrow. Like the T? Un, uh, yeah, it's undo. So whatever you just did before. Oh, yeah, that's undo, yeah. Okay. All right, so now. Uh, let's go over some more properties. Limit as x approaches a of c times f of x. Now, letters like c and um, k in math are used for constants. So this is equal to c times the limit as x approaches a of f of x. So basically what I'm saying here is if you have a constant, uh, you can always pull it outside of the limit. So this constant right here, you can always just take it out and put it outside. Sometimes it makes it an easier limit problem to do this first then multiply it by the constant here. And um, let's do another. Now, I'm, there, I'm not gonna go over every single property because they're in the book. If you just read over to section 2.3, if you look at page, uh, for example, page 95, it has all of them in a little box. And then if you go to page 96, it has some more of them. There's another one I want to show you here before I move on. Limit approach of a con breaking up, professor. Equal to so limit, huh? You're breaking up. What happened? Oh, can, can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you now. Yeah. Yeah, I don't need the headset because I'm uh, I'm in front of the computer, so I don't know what happened. No, just uh, probably the internet took a dip, but I can hear. We can hear you now. Okay. So let me give you an example of this. So, for example, if I give you a limit as x approaches, let's say, two, of some constant function, let's call it four. The answer is just four. So, oops. Uh, I gotta draw a, uh, give me a second, I gotta draw, I'll learn this. There's a way to constrain that out, I forgot how. Could you scroll down? Yes. Or up, you mean? Lauren, I don't know when you wrote that. Are we good? Yes, thank you. Oh, you can screenshot it too. It's probably a better screenshot than uh, the board, huh? I just realized why some professors like the online teaching, because they just sit on their couch the whole time. They don't move a muscle. What a bunch of lazy, oh, never mind. <laughs> Should, uh, um, moving on. <clears throat> so 
one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four. So the y equals four, the constant function four looks like this. So limit as x approaches two of the function four is two. So what that means is this. So it doesn't really matter at, as, as you're approaching two from the left or the right here, you see the red dot there? Okay, so as you're approaching uh, uh, x equals two from the left and right, you approach, the answer is gonna be four. So therefore the answer is four. It really doesn't matter what X is approaching. I could have used three, I could have used five, I could have used 17 here. It's gonna be four no matter what, right? So that's basically what this property is saying. Limit as X approaches A of C is equals C. All right, now let's do some fun problems. Um, uh, for example, let me just go over uh, this. Limit as X approaches, let's say two, of 3x plus 5, what is that equal to? So the way you would do a limit, what, we're, what this is called, we're going to do limits analytically or algebraically. You take the 2 here and you plug it in for into x. So you take this 2 and you plug it in wherever you see an x. So in this case, it's going to be... Um, so you're going to get 3 times 2 plus 5, and the answer will end up being... 6 plus 5 is 11, and that's it. Now, that's an easy one. Um, what if you plug it in and something weird happens? What do you do then? Well, what do I mean by weird? Well, I'll explain. Oh, let me pick it. I want to do an easy one first before I get to the tougher ones. So let's do this one here. Limit as x approaches 3 of x squared minus 9 divided by x minus 3. Give me one second. I'm just making a fix on my notes. Yeah. Okay, so what you want to do is if you plug in, if you try to plug in x equals three, uh, what ends up happening is uh, you get zero in the denominator and you get zero in the numerator. So zero over zero is indeterminate form. So what you want to do is um, uh, do some algebra, see if you can simplify it, and then after you simplify it, try again. In this case, it's a pretty easy one. Limit as x approaches 3. Hopefully, you guys all know how to uh, factor x squared minus 9. So you get x minus 3, x plus 3 over x minus 3. Let's see how the... I want to check something real quick here iPad, Apple Pencil is at 87%. Okay. I knew there was a battery in this thing. The Apple Pencil. So the X minus 3s cancel out, and you get limit as X approaches 3 of X plus 3. Now we can go ahead and plug it in. So we plug it in, 3 plus 3, so the answer is 6. So the key is here is at first when you try, you're going to get 0 over 0. That's not 0 over 0 is not 0. It's indeterminate form. So then what you do is you use your algebra skills and you simplify it. And then once you simplify it and then you try again, hopefully it works. And this time it worked and we got 6. Does that make sense? Okay. Is indeterminate form like a um, a common phrase in calculus? Is that yeah? Is? There's actually a whole section later on in the semester we're going to talk about indeterminate form. Just just remember that zero divided by zero is not zero. And a lot of times people like you know younger like high school and stuff that before calculus they think zero divided by zero is zero. No, uh, so zero divided by any other number is zero, but zero over zero we don't know what it is. It's indeterminate. Yeah. 
Yeah. So yeah, we'll we'll talk about we'll we'll do a whole section of indeterminate forms later. Who asked that question? I didn't know. Desiree. Oh, Desiree. Oh, that's your first question of the semester. No. Oh, so you simplify the fraction, right? And you um, plug it in. Yeah. So I simplified. Yeah. You 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 simplified. You you you. I factored. Then you cancel these out. Then you then you plug it in. So you once you reduce, get rid of that x minus three in the denominator. Then you're not going to get a zero in the denominator. All right. Let's do another example here. Now we're just going to do something that's actually a little bit more worth your time. Limit. As x approaches negative three of x squared plus three x divided by x squared minus x minus 12. Could you, oh, that was a good question. Okay, so now on this problem, again, you always wanna try to plug in, uh, you always wanna try to plug in uh, the number first, negative three. So when you plug in negative three, it ends up, Get you get you do get zero over zero. So then, what do you do? Well, what can you do? You just I look at it. Well, try to factor. That's it. So just try to factor. So this is equal to the limit as x approaches negative three. The top you can factor out an x, and the bottom you can factor out a negative twelve. So let's see. Not not factor out negative. It's minus four plus three. All right, you guys finish this. So you guys actually like this better than the whiteboard? I was making so much more effort on the whiteboard. I was standing up talking to you guys. It was picture, if it was picture clear, it'd be good, but it's kind of a little hard to see through the camera. But this is like here in front of our face. The uh, notes are easier to, to see on the screen. I like the whiteboard. I think it's more like in per. It seems like it's more in person. Like it's not. I don't you know. can still see me on the camera on the other. If you see, do you, do you see a little screen with me in there? Yeah, yeah. you can still see you. Yeah. yeah, I'm comfortable sitting now. Well, it depends. If I have to sit for 10 hours in a row. But last week, I was becoming an old man. My, my feet were really hurting after like a 10 hour day because my Tuesday, Thursday schedule is rough. I have a class from 10, 10 to 12 and then one to three. And then you guys at 3.15 to 5.15. Then I get a two hour break before another class. So by that, uh, then the other class ended from 7.15 to nine something. I was like, all right, I am done. It's not, it wasn't so bad in the, when I was, uh, when I, uh, what, it wasn't so bad when I was in the classroom because I was walking around, but here you're standing in the same spot. Get a stabilizer ball, work those abs. Oh my God. Oh, you mean while on the, uh, while teaching? You know, I, I was at the gym the other day. Did you know what the guy called me? I was waiting for the machine. He goes, all right, it's all yours, sir. He called me, sir. Is that bad? Well, it was the gray hair, but I, the, most of the gray hair is covered with the mask. Until I get old enough where I can't, you, then you can lift more than me, then you can call me sir. Not quite yet. All right. I know it's. <laughs> All right, moving on. But I like it. They're respectful. They wipe on the machine for me before I use it. Like, like I'm fragile old man. All right. <laughs> All right, so um, what was I doing? Oh yeah, let's do this problem. So the X plus threes cancel out. So 
So you plug in negative three now, you get negative three over. So negative three over uh, negative seven. So three sevenths, Did you guys get three sevenths? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Any questions? So that's the answer. Didn't I box it? <laughs> yeah, it's the answer. When do you stop writing the, the limit as X approaches negative three? Oh, oh very good question. So theoretically, wait, once you take the limit, you stop writing it. So up, up, up until this point, I haven't taken the limit yet. But once I take this negative three and I'm going to plug it in for X, then you stop writing it because then you already took the limit. Thank you. So just any time in math, once you apply it, you don't use it anymore. So for example, if I ask you what's the square root of 49, a lot of times in my lower math classes back in the day, uh, with the people would say, oh, square root of seven. Well, no, that's wrong. It's not square root of seven. It's just seven, right? So you would just say seven. You stop writing the square root because you already applied the square root. You took it. Okay. So now let's do another problem. Now this next problem is kind of a weird problem in the sense that it's, it looks very similar to the one that we're just doing. But in the homework, they ask you a question like this. So I want to uh, explain it to you. Let me write it out. X squared plus 3X over X squared minus X minus 12. So it's the same expression, but it's not, instead of x approaches negative three, it's x approaches four. So look, if you look at the top, it's the same expression of the previous problem, except instead of the negative three, we have four there. <clears throat> All right, now, so what we're gonna do here is, if you try to plug in four, you actually don't get zero over zero. You get some other number over zero, which implies that it's not a zero over zero case. So for me to easy explain why it's an asymptote is let's just go ahead and simplify this as much as we can. So if I were to simplify this limit as X approaches four, uh, it simplifies the same thing, right? Because it's the same expression. So it's going to end up being X over X minus four. So if you look at the top here, this simplifies to that. So therefore, this is going to simplify the same thing, right? Now, the problem is we didn't get rid of the factor of x minus 4. We still have an x minus 4 in the denominator. So what ends up happening is um, when you plug it in, it's still a 0 in the denominator. So we're going to cover this in a later section. What ends up happening is when you have an expression simplified and it's still a 0 in the denominator, there's a vertical asymptote there. So at x equals 4, right here, there's a vertical asymptote. And we're gonna cover this in a future section. So when you have a limit as X approaches four uh, uh, and, it's, and four is a vertical asymptote, what happens is it's either gonna to go to infinity or negative infinity, or it's gonna be does not exist. So here's the situation, uh, what happens. If you have, if you have, it, or if, you if, you have to, if you make a table and figure out, hey, it's going from infinity from this side and it's going to infinity from this side, then the answer would be infinity, right? Okay. Now, if it's negative infinity from this side and negative infinity from this side, then the answer would be negative infinity. But if it's infinity from one side and negative infinity from the other side, then the answer would be does not exist. You guys with me? Yeah, so the question, it's gonna be one of those three because of a vertical asymptote. And we're gonna talk about more vertical asymptotes in detail later. In this case, uh, there's really no other way to do it by just plugging in numbers. You can't do this algebraically any further. So if I were to plug in X, I wanna see what the function value is gonna be. So I'm just getting my calculator here. So what's to the left of four? Let's plug in three. So I get three over three minus four, which is three over negative one, which is negative three. Let's pick 3.9. So I get 3.9 divided by 3.9 minus four. I get negative 39. So it looks like as X gets closer and closer to four from the left side, it's going towards negative infinity. If I were to pick the right side five, 
let's see here, five over five minus one, five over one, which would be five. Let's pick uh, 4.1. So that would be 4.1 over 0.1, which gives me 41. So it looks like it's going to positive infinity from this side. So the answer to this is gonna be does not exist. Again, this is an unusual problem for the section. Most of the problems are gonna be like the previous couple of problems that I did, but this one, it's just, uh, they threw that in there. I think the point the author was trying to make is that don't necessarily just start factoring and think you're gonna be done because it, in this case, negative, it works, but sometimes it's X approaches a different number, so it doesn't work. How are we doing? So um, would, when we're doing these problems, would you recommend just simplifying first or plugging in first? Because we can also plug in first and then simplify, couldn't we? Yeah, it, there's nothing wrong with simplifying first. But if you, I mean, uh, if you simp, if it's an easy plug in, plug it in your head to see what you get. Just confirm that you get zero for zero. Mm -hmm. then simplify it. Then if you don't get zero over zero, double check, maybe you made an arithmetic mistake. There's a lot of these you are supposed to get zero over zero. There's just the one oddball problem in here that you don't. Okay, I see, okay. All right, so let's do another one. This is gonna be more like the other ones now. So let's say I gave you, this is gonna be number 16 from the book that I'm picking. Limit as X approaches negative one. 2x squared plus 3x plus 1 over x squared minus 2x minus 3. All right, so I, I, if you do plug in negative one, it does get you zero over zero. You don't have to write it out. You can just really quickly run it in your head. As long as you're getting zero over zero in your head, that's good enough. Now, if you're not getting it zero, zero over in your head, then you might want to write it out to see if you're not making a mistake. So this does, you do get zero over zero. So uh, hint, factor the top, factor the bottom, and then try to simplify. So I don't want to run out of time. So uh, we got limit as X approaches negative one. So the bottom is easy. It's just two numbers that multiply to negative three. So negative three and plus one. The top, you got the two X and X, two numbers that multiply to one. That's easy as well. One and one. And notice the inner product here is one X. Outer product here is two X. So therefore, adds up to 3x. So the x plus ones cancel out. All right, so then um, now we're ready to plug it in. So notice I'm plugging it in right now for the person that asked when you drop the limit now because I'm plugging it in. 
So you got uh, negative two plus one is just negative one over negative four. So the answer is one fourth. All right, so moving on. Ready for the next example? Yes, sir. Limit. The issue with the iPad is I'm not looking at you guys as much. I'm just focusing on my iPad. Limit as x approaches 2 of 4x plus 1, square root of 4x plus 1, and then minus 3 divided by x minus 2. So um, <clears throat> this is a little bit different. I mean, you do still want to confirm. So you plug in 2, and you'll notice if you do plug in 2, you get 0 in the numerator and denominator. So it is a 0 over 0 situation. So now you can't factor this. What do we do? Conjugate? Yes, exactly. Uh, you multiply top and bottom 100. Look at this. I can use a different color now. So you by the conjugate of the numerator, so uh, oh, plus sign here. The, the conjugate is the same two terms here except um, uh, you change the minus sign to a plus. If it was a plus, you change it to a minus. And then you got to multiply the top and bottom by the same thing because that way you're really multiplying by one, so you're not changing the value of the uh, expression. Now, one thing I do want to say, my previous classes, a lot of times we'll say, oh, do we square it? No, you don't square it because let me explain to you why. So this, this is just scratch work. So let's say you have a fraction like three-fourths. If you square it, you get nine over 16. Well, you just change the value of the fraction. You just can't uh, change the value of an expression. What you could do is say, oh, three fourths, I'm gonna multiply top and bottom by two over two. So that would give me six over eight. So you can multiply top and bottom by that. So I'm gonna go six over eight is the same thing as three over four. It's just, uh, so you can multiply top and bottom by something as long as you're multiplying top and bottom by the same thing. All right. While well, handwriting, use two fingers to scroll. Okay. All right. So limit as x approaches two. Now, the bottom you leave it in factored form. The top they're conjugates of each other. So what, what do I mean by conjugates? Well, remember, if you have a plus b times a minus b, same two terms with one with a plus, one with a minus, well, they multiply to a squared minus b squared. So if you have a situation like that, uh, what you want to do is, uh, well, so you have an a minus b, a plus b situation up here. So your a is that, and your b is that. Okay, so first term squared is 4x plus 1, because when you square a square root, they cancel each other out, minus last term squared, 3 squared is 9. So when I squared the first term, I get 4x plus 1. When I squared the 3, I get 9. Does that make sense? So simplify this further. Now, if you simplify the numerator, you get 4x minus 8. And then if you factor, you can factor out the 4 after and then simplify further. I think you should be able to finish it now.
All right, so you guys try to finish this. Did any of your professors, like when you were taking in class, did they use an iPad, like similar, just but in class and just projected it on the, the screen? They did? Oh, okay. So they don't have to get up. Huh? They, didn't, you just, they don't like standing, huh? Yes, that's what you're supposed to do, Daniel. So factor out the four. Because you're supposed to, you want to get rid of this X minus two on the bottom. That's what's bothering us, which, which is making the denominator zero. So once you can cancel these X minus twos, then you can go ahead and plug in x equals two and you get your answer. Quarter nine is three plus three is a six. Oops. So four over six, which is two thirds. All right, you guys want to do one from scratch? Uh, professor? Yeah. Uh, isn't there some kind of rule saying that you can't have square roots on the denominator? Well, our final answer is two thirds. Um, I mean, on like the step above. Well, well, we already, we simplified it. So the rule you're thinking is rationalize the denominator. Uh, uh, so had uh, a final, if you had a, um, like an algebra problem and your answer was one over the square root of X plus two, then this, they say rationalize the denominator. So maybe uh, you don't have a square root in the final answer. We're, we're not even, that you're comparing, talking about something else. We don't, I didn't say rationalize the denominator. I just, the, the point of the question was finding the limit and I found the limit. So in the steps, it's okay to have a uh, uh, square root in the bottom? Yeah. All right. Thanks, Professor. Uh-huh. I'm sorry, I, I don't recognize your name. Was it different last time? Um, It's just, I don't know, it just keeps coming up at, as H, no matter how much times I change it. It stands for her day. H R I D A. Oh, okay, yeah, that's no problem. All right, you guys want to do one? Sure. All right, uh, time I want to. is here. You know what? I might hold that. Screen broadcasting. Live broadcast Zoom has stopped due to you. Stopped. 
I stopped screen share? You guys can't. Okay. I guess I'm it, still right? screen sharing. Okay. Yeah. Oh, no, you can't. See, I'm scrolling. Okay, let me see. Let me just try again. Go to Zoom. Start broadcast. Okay. Okay, now it's working. Okay. Now you, now the scrolling works. Okay. All right, let's do this one. Limit as t goes to zero of one over t minus one over t squared plus t. That's supposed to be t here. So in this case, when you have multiple fractions, I'll give you the tip, combine it into one fraction. So what I would first do here is write limit as t approaches zero of one over t minus, well, factor out of t here, so t plus one. If you remember from your algebra, what's the uh, uh, least common denominator here? T, t times t plus one. Yes. Um, uh, so, so there's a question here. Is there a time we will get asked if the limit is approaching from the left or right? Um, in this section, no, it's just limit as x approaches the number. But these problems that we're doing right now. We'll do le left sided and right sided limits when we get to the absolute values, but I'm going to save that for the next class meeting. All right. So, um, sorry, what'd you say the LCD is? It's t times t plus one. So the, the this the right one has it. This one you're going to multiply by t plus one over t plus one. And then minus sign is here still. So we got limit as t approaches zero of t plus one over t times t plus one minus one over t times t plus one. Now they have the same denominator, so I can go ahead and subtract and combine like terms. So you got limit as t approaches zero of the one minus one cancels out, so it's t over, it's supposed to be t, yeah, I know it looks bad. Now you can cancel out the t's as well. Uh, I stopped screen sharing, I don't know why. So then you get limit, oh, okay, hold on. This is, it, it keeps saying Zoom broadcast has stopped. There's another way you can do this by screen mirroring, but um, where I don't have to log on to a second account, but then I can't see the chat as well. I'll try that a little bit later. Where's notability? Oh, maybe the internet connection is weak, that's why. So limit approaches infinity of one over t plus one. So now we're ready to take the limit as t goes to zero because we canceled out these t's here. So now it's just uh, plug in zero. 
So if we plug in zero, you get one over zero plus one. So notice I dropped the limit because I'm plugging it in. One over one, which is one. Oh, that was a nice answer. So once you plug in the number, you don't have to write uh, the, the limit. The... Correct. Okay. Now, I do want to try something here. Let me log out here. I'm going to, I'm going to put it back here. I just uh, I want to just log out to Zoom here and leave meeting. But um, what I want to do here is, is um, I hit share screen. Apparently it knows an iPhone, iPad is here for some reason. Share, and it shares it. I got a little screen mirroring here. This is another way to do it. Can you see my screen mirroring or no? No. Mm. It worked last time, but all right, I'm just going to go back to what I had. Morning meeting eight, four, five. 56, 67, 37. All All right, so I'm going to show and share the screen here now. Okay. Now you can see it, okay? Yep. Okay. So anyway, any questions? I have a question. Yeah. So for the reason that there's a number one on top is because there's like an imaginary one on top, right? Oh, are you but talking about um, are you talking about this like, one right here? Correct. Yeah, so well, when you cancel out the T's here, there's always a one left. You can't put a zero because when you, uh -huh. you cancel the T's, you're removing a factor of one. So there's always, this is a T times one here. So you don't need to write it, but it's always something times one. So times one. So when you cancel the T's, there's always a one left. Okay, thank you. Anything else? So now, um, I don't want to throw too much at you today because you got a quiz to prepare for on Thursday. And we, uh, so I still got to finish some of two, three. So when you do the 2.3 homework, stop at number 27 after the last problem, okay? So 27 would be the last one you do. I, so on 2.3, it says do 1 and then 11 through 27. Now the 37, 39, 41, and 43, those uh, you're not going to do until after next class meeting. So I'll finish that for you Thursday along with what we already did 2.4. Then we'll start 2.5 as well, which is continuity. So, um, uh, so for homework, you do that and then you can do two four, which is what we did before the break. That's the delta epsilon stuff. Now, as far as the quiz on um, Thursday, the quiz will cover, uh, I'm not always gonna be this specific, but I'll tell you what the quiz will be on this Thursday. So you should be able to find the limit graphically. So if I give you a, if I give you a, a, a graph and I say find the limit as X approaches whatever, you should also be able to 
graph a piecewise function. And it was just a couple questions like that. So um, that would be it. It's, quizzes are worth five points. They go pretty quick. I just put a couple questions on the board. Well, in this case, I might use my iPad. Uh, but uh, you won't know the questions until the quiz time. But I'll create an assignment sometime between now and Thursday. So you'll see assignment, but when you go there, there'll be nothing. There. It's just something so you can submit it when you take the quiz. And uh, any questions regarding this class for me? So how will the quiz work? Will we just like, you'll just put it on the board and we'll do it while you watch us and then yeah. we'll submit it? Yeah, and then that will be the end of class. Does that make sense? And how much time do we get for the quizzes? It varies on how, on the quiz, but generally about, well, in class, I would only give you like 10 minutes. I probably would give you more because it's just, you gotta take your phone out, you gotta uh, snap it, make a PDF file, and you may have to like email it to yourself on the computer before you can submit it. So I, I give plenty of time. I give an extra 10 minutes just for that. So you should be good as far as the time. I generally give you 10 minutes more than you need, in my opinion. <laughs> so uh, hopefully time is not an issue. Anything else regarding this class? So oh yeah, do, fill out the student information sheet. Yeah, you submit the quiz on Canvas when you take it. If the assignment, it will be under assignments. I'll explain it all uh, on Thursday when you're taking the quiz. I'll be, I'll be here in case you have any questions. So you can ask me, don't be worried about that. Yeah, you, you would submit it as a PDF file. So when you're doing your student information sheet, you should be practicing making a PDF file. Now the quiz is only one sheet, but on the student information sheet, you're practicing multiple sheets for the exam. So you have that down. And um, yeah, so I'm looking forward to looking at those. Uh, you should have it done by tonight. And then um, that's pretty much it. So just keep in mind, uh, two, four, you can do the whole assignment. Two, three, don't do these last four questions that I just underlined right here. Um, so we'll finish that up and then we'll start two five on Thursday and we should be good. Will we ever uh, do you have anything you want to say? Huh? Will we ever turn in our homework, uh, like our work, like in a PDF or something? Um no, I just give quizzes instead. Yeah, I mean. I know I should probably look at it to motivate you to do it, but it's just a lot of it's just a lot of work for me to look at all everyone's homework. I got you're not the only class that I have, so make sure you're responsible. You're responsible to know the stuff. It could be on a test. You, your 152 professor is going to require you to know it. Uh, yeah. So Desiree, what's your what's your major? Engineering physics. Oh yeah. So you got to do this stuff. Okay. If it was like yeah. you know, <laughs> if you were like a uh, art history major and you're just taking this class for fun, I would understand you skipping out on the homework. But, you know, yeah. <laughs> engineering physics requires a little bit more than art history. There's nothing wrong with art history, but, you know, it's a little uh, different. So, uh, question, Professor. So, we're, for right now, until the next class, we need to have up to 2.4 homework. Yeah, done. well, well, two, three, you would do just these problems. These problems right here, you would um, uh, wait until I cover it. Two, four, you can finish, yeah. Thank you. But two, four is the, the, that's the epsilon stuff. So you'll have to, uh, but you will need to know it for the exam. So you have some time to learn. Are we good? That was a big delay before. I wrote the Delta Upsilon for a while ago. Okay now. okay, now it's not a delay, okay. Okay, any questions? Are we good? Aliyah, do you have anything you want to mention? No, we're good. We're reviewing at, right after class during tutoring today if anybody needs help. We're doing um, the, what do you call it? The graphs, uh, piecewise functions and limits graphically. Oh, what a coincidence. Uh, that's what's on the quiz. I know, right? Well, that's what we covered last week, so. Okay. And also, right, I have so, a motion on there, but yeah. All righty, so I'll see you all Thursday. All right, try to stay sober. Bye.